babies. I'm sorry. I had to make sure see my husband wanted. You know, many times when I can't sleep, you know, I try not to disturb him. So I just get up and I just come in my living room and just put a little blanket on my sofa and pillow behind my head. And you know what I find out that many times that if you find yourself waking it up like at the same time, like sometime three in the morning, uh, four in the morning, five in the morning. You know, those times are so precious because that's the fresh manna that we receive. Many times, you know, you just can't, can't just fall asleep. So for me to keep everything respectful and balanced, I kind of like sneak out the room and just come get on my sofa, put my little blanket in my little pillow, and I just, you know, sit here and just say, you know what, let me see who else up this time of morning because it's such a special moment, you know, and we don't take nothing for granted at all. Nothing for granted. I just, I just love people so much. But you know, love and respect, it starts at home first. You know, anybody could do something for an hour or two. You know what I'm saying? But the real thing starts when we're at home. When nobody sees us but God. And you see, like, I felt sleepy, and then I'm like, but I'm not sleepy. I said, well, let me just get up and see who else up. Because somebody else up, too. And then I was able to see my daughter off, you know, for work, to get my kiss from her. It's something about it. You know, when your babies, you know, leave home and and they kiss you on your forehead and like, I love you, mama. That means the world. Oh my God, it means the world to me. And I know it means the world to you too. It's something about being just a mother. Because mother carries so many roles. But I promise you that God equip us with everything we need to get the job done. And so I always tell God, like, Lord, you know, if he, if he, if he grace you to do something, he's going to always give you the strength to get the job done. I see you, Louise. You love home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that fresh manna that, oh, is so precious. I don't know whether nobody ever told it to you or not, but if you find yourself, like, get it up, not even an alarm clock, it's like, you just get up. It's like automatic, you be up. Like, three o'clock in the morning, your eyes pop wide open, like, wow. But you, you don't take nothing for granted, you know? It's like, Lord, you know, if there's anything, you know, that I'm to talk about or to pray about, or maybe just simply just meditate. It means the world. And I know sometimes I feel like I'm such a big crybaby. But, you know, when you catch people that, Sometimes, most of the time, you know, like, that they easy to cry. Those people pretty much have what you call a soft heart. They really have real love in their hearts for you. And my heart is so full, you know. Even though I feel, I'm like, I'm feeling like a little sleepy, but I'm not all the way there yet. 
And this happened often, like, he gets me up like this time in the morning, but I know to take advantage, you know, of that time because I know purpose be in it. Anything God allow, good is in it. I just want to just tell you how much he loves you. I just want to tell you that how uplifting that God present and the continents of his face just shining so much upon you. You could be on your job. You could be at home like I'm at home. It doesn't matter where you are. He just simply loves you so much. You know what reminds me when the Lord says, he said, listen, I drew you, you know, by my love. And that love causes us to, to keep a repentance heart but so that we can stay in right standing with the Father because Louise, he loves us so much. And this is a year that God is going to... And you know, this is not even... The first quarter of the year haven't finished because you got January, February, and then you have March. So the first quarter is not even finished. It means like, it's so amazing to me. But I want you to keep this in your heart and keep it close to you. And I say it over and over and over again because I know God is so truthful for what he promised. And it may not happen the way I want it. It may not happen on the timing that I want it. It just may look like, you know, that it's just not happening. But oh, but I can swore and I can attest the truth to you by the blood of the Lamb. Not one word of the Lord will fall to the ground. He loves you so, so, so much. You see, this year is going to be a year, and I could say great expectations, but the prophecy is this, that you can't shake it off of me because it's real. You know, where he says, you know, I will bless the work of your hands. You don't get tired of me telling this to you. It's going to become a song to your little heart. Because it's real and it's true. And he is so faithful to his word. He don't watch over nobody else's word but his own. So he has done what he promised. He's just getting you and I prepared for what's to come. And if you notice, you know, the enemy has been so upset with us. But that's because the fact he knows something. They have them not yet been revealed to you and I about the Father. But we know by the perception, the intuition in our spirit, oh, we know something good has happened. And it is the whole truth. And the prophecy that he gave, he said in Deuteronomy 28, you have to read it for yourself, you know. I think it's from about the 11 verse probably. Again, I say, he said, I will bless the work of your hands and the fruit of your labor. You know, when God said that to me, it was so profound. You know, the Lord, you know, his word remained the same. It would never change. But what makes it so alive? Well, number one, he breathed upon his word. And he causes it to become afresh in your heart so that it can birth life in your spirit because it's what you believe that your power to a thing. And I often tell you all, pay close attention to that deep desire that's in your heart because that's the only, only place he's going to speak to you. I only can speak to your heart. And I don't mean your organ heart. I mean the spirit of you that lives and dwells on the inside of you. And that's where he dwells. 
And when he fellowship and relate and communicate with us, it's so by the spirit that he speaks, you know. I might be a little tired, but my heart's so happy, 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 happy. Now, you know happiness is by choice, right? But not joy. Joy is given from my father. You know, happiness can come and go, come and go. Like, you can get a new car and get happy. And then, you know, like, a month later, you know, you don't have that little happiness like you had before. But yet you have that joy, and that keeps you humble and grateful and thankful and just to tell God you love him. That's because you love him. No agenda, no motives. It's just simply plain old. God, I love you for you. And that's what he wants. And you know when he said that, that he was going to bless the work of your hands and the fruit of your labor? I'm not going to stop by grace echoing it because it came so directly from him. Circumstance can't prevent it. Issues can't prevent it. You know, discomfort can't prevent it. Nothing can prevent what the Lord spoke. It's going to do just what he said. Even with the body, you know, the doctor going to be amazed because they're going to be like, wow. And they'll call it high power. But, you know, we can respect that because people have different religion, you know. But we know better. We know Jehovah is the man that get the job done. Do by the power of the Holy Spirit. By you just speaking the word. Remember now, before Jesus was given the name Jesus, he first was the word. So honey, sweetheart, he hears his word. No matter what you're feeling, he hears his word. It's his word. You know he told Lucifer, he said, listen up. He said, man, they cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that's proceeded out of the mouth of God. So that's how, that's that's why you have to to know it's so important to become word oriented, word conscious, so that when things take place in life, you know, you know how to react to it. Because you can only act, act uh, to it two ways. One by faith, the other by fear. And fear is none other than doubt and unbelief. And you'd be like, that's the star. You know what I do with the doubt? You doubt, doubt. And you recognize it. And you let it know. I recognize you. And then you take authority over it. Oh, Oh, Lucifer, he is so fearful of the blood of Jesus. He is so terrified of the name Jesus. If you just say that name, he get terrified. Like, why you want to send me over there to Sandy and Johnny and all oh, their houses? Because you know they're not going to tolerate me. Right. You're right. Bridget. In the Lord's grace, it's not going to tolerate your foolishness. Now, we all understand that nobody is exempt from the affairs of life. But, oh, but we also understand a promise was made. He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I'm with you, God says, to the end of the world. And with that being said, I got to connect back with you there you go. God. You see, he, I don't pay no mind. You know, he try to act up, act up, and you be like, whatever. You know, but he definitely declared that this is the season of our lives. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss it. And he said it. He said, I will bless the work of your hands and the fruit of your labor. You know, your hands represent your skills, 
You know, just you're good at. You know, well, how would I know what you know what God is calling me to do? But you have to pay close attention to the deep desire that's birthed in your heart. And that's God. What he's doing is that he's wanting you to recognize that he's wanting his desire to become your desire so that he can fulfill his perfect will in your life. And that's what you and I want. We want the perfect will of God. Oh, my heart gets so happy and full. And another thing he said, not only did he quote that in Deuteronomy 28, I believe, 11, you go read it for yourself and you'll see it. And come in agreement with the word. Because God watches over nobody's word but his own. And then he says in Deuteronomy, the first chapter, I think we're about the 11th verse, it's going to blow your little mind. He said, listen up. He said, now many people teach us, you know, a hundredfold and so forth and so forth, talking about the blessings of the Lord. You know, like your house. Your house is not the blessings. It's just the effect of the blessings. Well, why are you saying that, Pastor Stop? Because he has so much more in store for you to receive. So therefore, he keeps adding and adding and adding. And then again, he says I, to you again and again, Deuteronomy 1, I believe about the 11th verse, he said, listen up. He said, I'm going to bless you. He said, with a thousand increase. Well, you know what that means? Whoa, that remind me. Remember when David said, he said, my cup run it over? Well, the running over, you know, is for what you're not going to miss. Because what stays in the cup, that's for you. And that's for me. <laughs> it's really now. That's why he run over because that's for to help people. You see, I don't care how much you scream and shout and tell the Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you. You can cry for days. But until you love people, you're not loving. Jesus said it like this. He said, how can you say you love the one whom you see? And he, you can't see, and you saying I love you, but yet you can't even love the one that you naturally see with your natural eyes. Really, don't be deceived like that. God loves you, and this love is so special; it's divine. But He wants you to know that that's not your love. That's his love that he put in you. See, when you accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, how about we use the word born again? You know, when you're born again, you receive his nature. You know what his nature is? His nature is love. You know what his life is, huh? His life is eternal. So now you're walking in such powerful gift. Oh, my God. You're walking in the gift of love and the gift of eternal life. I don't care who don't, who don't like it. <laughs> Nobody can do nothing about it. You stay focused. You stay on the right track. You let the Lord complete this great work that he has started in you. Let me give you some wisdom before I let you go. Keep your mouth shut. Don't be trying to tell people these things. Number one, it's not for the people. It's for you. First person he addressed and he want to know, it's like, do you believe? That's a wrap. And when you say to the Lord, Lord, I believe, that's all it takes is that you simply just believe. 
and God will do the rest. Because, you see, it's what you believe that give power to a thing. Nothing live until you release your faith into it. Now you got to remember, faith, it tells you, it's done. But to believe is to accept what's already done. Big difference right there. But with that type of wisdom, it'll have you receiving miracle after miracle, breakthrough after breakthrough, because now you operate by his divine principles and his structure and the way that he planned it to be. Not your way, his way. You know, I find that many people, you know, they be like very skeptical and saying, Lord, especially if they want something, you know what I'm saying? You know, and they'll be like, Lord, if it be your will, let thy will be done. And you'd be like, you know, but this is for mature people, you know. It's like, well, brother, it's not his will, and I want it so bad. And, and he just may say no. So some, you'd be like, you know, but that's when you're growing, you know what I'm saying? See, he grows you into maturity. And then once you reach that level of maturity in your faith, listen up, my loves. There's nothing that you would not believe God for because your priority beats in order. Maybe that's why he had me sitting here just talking to you all at this time in the morning. It's 2.30. It's 2.30 in the morning. But I want you to understand that, baby, that, you know, when that, you know that alarm clock is not getting you up. You already know that. And you know your eyes pop wide open, and you be like, okay, Lord. You see, many times he just want to talk to you. Or perhaps he just wants you to meditate. Or perhaps he just want to fellowship. You just never know. But you can't go wrong, though, when you're spending that time with him. Oh, God love you so, 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 so much. And you see, that's the approval that you want. His approval. <laughs> Don't you ever, ever, ever forget that. You want the Lord's approval. And that's why you say to the Lord, let thy will be done. And when you get to the, the level of maturity, you know, and doing it like that, that means you been and threw your little hands up in the air and you be like, mm, baby, it's on God. It's not on me. <laughs> Remember what he said. He said, listen up. Those things that's called burdens, the thing that weigh you down. He said, can you just cast it on me? You know, like the woman, you know, with the uh, with the little mite. She just threw it in the bucket, you know. But let me tell you why she was honored. Even to this day, you know, it's like she was made, uh, how can I put it? Like a memorial. Yeah. That she always would be remembered. Why so pesticide? Because she gave more than them all. Even the rich people. She gave more than them all. Well, how can that be? Because she gave her whole day's wage, wages of work. And she said Kill God. You know why she threw it? Because the enemy was trying to tell her, if I was you, I won't do that. I won't give all that I have to the Lord. I won't give my 10%. I won't give. No, no. Man, think about it. He, he allowed us to keep the 
And then he said, you just give me the 10%. You know what that 10% does? That's that 10% that God uses to mold us, to shape us, mm -hmm. to be who we are today, you know, and making those decisions. And when you mess up, you know, you can tell him, Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then there's room for what you call grace for forgiveness. That he forgive you at that very second. Not like, hmm, think about it. Nah. Nah. That very second. He hears you. And then he goes, now, thank me for what you believe in me for. That's how much he loves you. Well, you see, you and I could just be on this phone, Louise, and, you know, we could talk about the Lord all night long because when he is, even though if he's, he's the center of it all. In other words, babies, we can do without anything in this world. You remember what David said? Lord, I know I'm rich. He said that. I know I'm rich. Got many wives. I know, Lord, you know, it took me. Seven years, I believe, to build his house and maybe 12 years, you know. You see what I'm saying? To build, you know, well, uh, he wanted to worship the Lord. But David said this, David said, Lord, look, hold up. You have all this. Just don't take your spirit from me. Just don't take your anointing from me, Lord. You have all that. I, I can regain that back. <laughs> Anything natural can be recovered. Even spiritual things can be recovered. God wants your heart. He loves you so much. And I'm going to say this. Did I think I'm going to let you go? You know, you know, the question, you know, ask, you know, Lord, you know. And, and, and you know what? One of my dear sisters said this to me. She said to me, Bridget, I said, yeah. She said, uh, and I speak humbly, my grace. Take no credit for nothing. She said, all the Lord has given you. She said, you could have taken all of that and could have done so much for you. Talking about for myself, right? I'm like, what are you trying to say? I said, guess what? If he tell me to do it again, I'll do it all over again. <laughs> because when you do it, you will be, like, remorseful. Not, uh, not even remorseful, excuse me, regret. But when God do it, there's no regret. You will say it just like God graced me to say it. And guess what? I'll do it again. If God says so, I'll do it again. You know, always got to remember, it's never a loss. It's always a lesson. God love you so much. That's why I got to get your hand on the book that is written. What make Christians so hypocritical? Very, 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 very inspirational. It just take you from level to level. I'm talking about to the glory of the Lord. He would teach you nothing but the wisdom of his, um, how, how can I say it? The wisdom of his mind, you know? Your mind become his mind. You begin to think like he think. Yeah, that's how it goes. And you be like, girl, girl please. Ain't nobody important but God. I didn't part by Jesus. I'd do it again if he tell me to. If he said, look, get the whole house away. Here, take the bad boy. <laughs> Who cares? I just don't take your spirit from me. I remember the time the Lord told me. He said, you're wealthy, right? I said, yes, Lord. You know, I speak the word of the living God in faith. You know what I'm saying? I said, yes, Lord. And then he said, no, nah, you don't mind giving it up. 
I don't mind giving it to you. Like, okay, cool, you know, but I'm not expecting this and that and the other from you. I just want to obey what you say. And it was, I think my first Mercedes, it was one of them big boys too, you know? And then he said, give it away. I said, okay, cool. We give it away. You said, give it away. Give it away. So guess what happened? Gave it away. Went to church that Sunday because he was talking to me about it, driving to church. Okay, and the Lord said, give it away, give it away. And God gave it away to the individual. And then the Lord said, okay, you can do whatever you like. Transfer the papers over to you. I already got it to where about, you know, where about you can either keep it or you can even sell it and get the money. It didn't matter to me because I know what God said. That's what makes me so happy when you are willing to obey God rather than man. Oh, I'm so excited. I love you so, so, so much. Remember the prophecy that God spoke in your lives. Bless the work of your hands and the fruit of your labor. The hands of your skills that you're good at. The fruit of your labor is the harvest. Remember, David said, my cup runneth over. That's what you're not going to miss, the one that's running over. That's what you're not going to miss. What was in that cup belonged to you. <laughs> you always walk in the goodness of the Lord all the days of your life. And you got to see it just like that. Well, I love you. It's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, but I love it. I know I'm probably going to sleep a little later, but who cares? Nobody important but God. And just stay positive. Speak positive things. Don't be like sitting around listening to all that negative stuff and don't, mm, don't do that. You don't only get in the way of what the Lord is doing in your life. And he's getting it, you know, and it will also stop, you know, whatever that God is doing and bringing it, you know, to be part of your life, you know, it will prevent anything from getting in the way of stopping it from coming to you. I love you so much. <laughs> I love you from my heart. Mm. You know, the devil could fake everything. But how about he can't fake love? See, anybody can pretend for an hour on a Sunday. Come on, let's get real. Anybody can pretend, you know, for a few minutes, you know, you sit down and talk with them. Come on. But, oh, but stay with that person for about a good. I don't even give you six months because God is also, you know, grace me in that area too. But God had me bring his, you know, Several people, I know two for sure, to stay with me. And he said, all I want you to do is to love them. And he did it. And each time, each one stayed a whole year. But God showed nothing but love. And didn't fake it. And told them straight off the bat. Now let me tell you something. Now when I'm at church, it's Pastor Stott. That's, that's what God called me to do. That's my job. Okay, that's my gift. But you see, when I come to these doors, okay, I'm Mama Bridget, wife Bridget, Mama Bridget, <laughs> Bridget, sister Bridget. <laughs> I got sisters, right? Yeah. You know how to balance yourself, babies. That's why it's so important. You go. You call TBN. You call Trilogy, the publishing company they use. You call to Amazon. 
you get that book that's called What Make Kristen So Hypocritical. Matter of fact, we'll be in Houston, I think about the next three months. You got to be wise, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to overexert yourself. So you got to be wise. Every three months, you know, we tour out. And we let the Lord be thy glorified. Now about that. So Houston, I'll be seeing you in about the next three months. <laughs> oh, the mighty God. Oh, I, I just could see and feel the power of God just regenerating through the airwaves just to get to you bring change oh my god god is so good to us you know you know to that you won't change yeah change come you know when you make that decision you know to change I talk long enough and you already know that i you know, i could talk about the lord all day long now don't get me wrong now he allow us to express and experience both sides of the world. The spiritual side and the natural side. The only difference is there is what you call boundaries. And he teaches you that too. Mm. Muna, I love you so much. Let me just pray with you right quick. Oh, Father. In the name of Jesus, it's so beautiful. We love you, Father. We love you from our hearts. And Lord, you say, if just two come together and agree. Oh, God, everything that they ask you for, thy will shall be done. And nothing shall prevent, stop, interfere, interrupt, or uh, uh, stop it from prevailing. Well, you have spoken in their lives. And that's nothing but the spirit of goodness, the favor of the almighty God. Expect, expect and love for it. It's going to happen. He loved me and you, you know that? Ah, uh, you and I, however you want to put it. All of us. He love us. He don't love nobody. See, you're not even mine, not even yours. But as person, he love himself some Bridget. And learn to call your own name up. And then learn to govern what you say. Watch over what you speak. Watch over what you hear. Watch over, you know, you know what you're seeing. Watch over God for those things. Don't be sitting down there watching anything, you know, TV wise. And no, no. Am I not? Am I telling you don't watch TV? No, no. Be balanced with what you hear. Be balanced. You know, see me. I like a variety kind of music. I like jazz. I like blues. You know, and, but you got to be very, very careful with the today music because of the fact, you know, you want to judge the words of what are you hearing. Yeah, different variants of music. I like to dance, you know. But the priority has got to be in order. God first, family second, church third. God is first in our hearts. He loves us. All right. Louise, receive everything God has declared in your life. This very second. I say to all of you out there, don't miss your moment. I love you all so much. May the blessings of the Lord and may the continence of his presence 
shine so deeply upon every last one of you all to bring all glory to his name. All right. I'm going to say what? Well, it's Thursday. <laughs> Happy Thursday morning. <laughs> I love you, my darlings. I love you so much. May God forever bless you all, my babies. Good night to a lot of you all. I love you. Mwah! All right. Talk with you later. Okay, my sweet. <laughs> Good night, my darlings. Talk to you later. <laughs>